Hello, I am Dr. Amita. I am editor in chief of uh, medical journal D.Y. Porter with David and academic editor of Class One. So I will be discussing something about publication misconduct. What constitutes uh, publication misconduct? Uh, what are uh, earlier there were the traditional types of misconducts like plagiarism, duplicate publication, ghost authorship, gift authorship, uh, authorship. But nowadays, there are certain other misconducts which falls in the gray zone, which are difficult to classify in black and white, but which are called questionable uh, publication practices. So I'll be touching on that also. And I'll be touching on the factors which give rise to publication misconduct. Uh, the publication misconducts are increasing because of the pressure to publish. And nowadays, there is not only pressure to publish, there is a pressure to publish in high impact journals, impact of Paris. And uh, so I'll be touching on the environment, academic environment, which is making this misconduct more frequent. And I will also try to suggest some measures to check this publication misconduct, self-regulation, how others can point out the misconduct, whistle blowing, so our retraction, these are some of the issues I, I will be sharing on. So I will be just giving a short presentation. I am sharing the screen. So uh, this is uh, my topic, what constitutes a publication misconduct. And uh, I will be, so this is the scope of my talk, common belief. Common belief was earlier it was published of Paris, but which has given rise to earlier misconducts like data fabrication, falsification, plagiarism, salami publication, that is the same publication, you break it down into small portions uh, to increase the count, gift authorship, a person who has not worked on the manuscript, he gets the authorship. Ghost authorship, somebody else is writing for a person whose name is there, but behind him, someone else is writing. But these were the conventional misconducts. Now we are in the era of questionable practices which fall in the gray zone. And uh, we'll be discussing how to check this. So stakes are getting higher now. Most of you must have experienced beyond publish of Paris, we have impact of Paris. The push is to publish your numbers and towards impact. Impact is measured by some metrics which are often misused and again they are questionable. There, regarding metrics or indicators, there is a law known as Bullhart's law which says that as soon as an indicator is introduced, gaming of the metrics follows that the indicator loses its validity. Like we have now, right from school, everybody gets more than 90%, 95%. So it is very difficult to take their marks as an indicator to distinguish between a good student or mediocre student or a creative student. So same thing is happening with this metrics in publication. Most of the metrics have been designed to evaluate a journal, but those metrics like impact factor and other matrices are being misused to judge the author. So these give rise to certain questionable practices and also the appraisal based on peer reviewed publication. Academics are under great pressure. Paper earns more work based on metrics which can be gave, which can be certain questionable practices. You can improve your metrics without improving the worth of your research or without improving the worth of your paper. The contents may or may not have an impact. The misuse impact factor of a journal gives currency to a paper before anyone has read it. You get a paper published, an author gets a paper published in a high impact journal, nobody reads the paper, but he or she gets the, because the impact factor relates to the journal, not to the paper. So it, it is misuse. The inventor of the impact factor himself, Eugene Garfield, knew that in the wrong hands, it might be misused and it is being misused now. New forms of publication misconduct which has come into play are fake peer reviews to get published in high impact journals. There have been authors 
who are dishonest authors have hacked journal databases and they have imposted peer reviewers and other practices questionable are adding additional authors to papers already in press. In fact, there were some reports that on payment, a person can get authorship of a paper. If a paper, second place, third place, they have got different rates. So all these practices are in both. Then setting, setting up citation and networks among authors, like you scratch my back, I scratch your back. So this is having a citation network, the journals between journals, because the more the citation, the impact factor depends on the citations. So setting up citation networks. They have been also, they have been detected also by a sort of a pattern recognition. Like some journals are citing a group of journals, they're citing mutually. So certain uh, AI, artificial intelligence or pattern recognition can pick up this type of questionable practices and they have picked up in the recent past. Then universities, most of you must be under pressure who are working in academics. The universities set up paper mills to boost publication counts. There have been recent instances where they have got a paper every day published beyond uh, beyond uh, feasibility. I mean, if a person publishes uh, more than 300 papers in a year, there have been some authors who are so prolific that which have got no impact, actual research impact, but these again comes into near from the questionable. You cannot uh, put it in uh, dishonest as such, but gaining the metrics, there have been an author who has been publishing letter to the editor and his founder more than 300 or 500 publications a year. So these are some of the paper bills which are just to increasing the publication count. The line between misconduct and questionable practices is getting blurred because if the questionable practices are overused, that will almost amount to misconduct because it gets, gives the author of such practices an unfair advantage over other authors who must be sincerely working and producing actual research work. So certain practices, if overused, can become misconduct. It is something like in a cricket match, you have, can bowl two bouncers in a over, but if you bowl four or five bouncers in a over, it amounts to intimidate. So similarly, there are certain gray zones. In this academic anarchy, cynics can be forgiven. There have been some uh, cynic one, Ivan Oreski, who has started his watchdog blog, the Retraction Watch, he says, a critic of the literature has stated the most common outcome for those who commit fraud is a long career. So these are certain unfortunate uh, things which has uh, polluted the academic environment. So whether any guidelines or whether we require change in the appraisal of universities, appraisal of institutions, appraisal of authors. It is a debatable thing. Remedial Act, how to go with publication misconduct? First, establish that there is a misconduct. The certain misconducts are very easy to detect and that should be immediately corrected. Like difficult in some cases, of course, as I said, questionable practices are difficult, but some uh, Obvious misconducts are plagiarism, duplicate publication, data fabrication. Nowadays, most journals insist data availability statement. Either it should be in the public domain or the data should be uh, available on request. Because flawed research can harm humanity. Plagiarism is theft, including self-plagiarism. Many authors, novice authors, may not be aware that self-plagiarism, because you are increasing your account with the same word. So it is a dishonest practice, misconduct. Duplicate publication statement is also misconduct. They insert the authors. And when there is clear-cut evidence of misconduct, the paper should be retracted and sooner the better to, so that others do not use the paper and get misguided. So there is a committee on publication ethics which has given the guidelines, list of situations where editors should consider retraction. Retraction, when clearly indicated, is laudable as a post-publication self-correction of the literature. 
When clear indications, the retraction should be as soon as possible to prevent other users citing the flawed work or misleading policy or practice. Retraction should carry a clear label and identified by search engines which link to the retracted paper. It is something like a cancel check on top of the paper. The word retraction should come in bold letters. And paper should be marked reflected on all online sources. How well does retraction work? Retraction unable to keep pace with ingenious methods to gain publication process. Unfortunately, retraction takes time because you have to establish the misconduct. And by the time that paper might have been cited many times, and many times the paper on flawed papers are not detected and they continue polluting the research. And in fact, you uh, must have heard about the statement by John Yonitz of Stanford University professor of Stanford University, he said that most research cannot be trusted nowadays. It may be due to misconduct or it may be due to poor methodology. So even poor methodology also, if it is found, there may be it, uh, misconduct or a flawed paper may be due to actual dishonesty or flawed paper may be due to incompetence, poor methodology. That also the paper should be retracted. Process of retraction can be a long time, if at all. So if unproductive evidence, either way, if they're taking time, but there are primary facies, there is a case of suspecting misconduct. In the interim, an editor can issue an expression of concern. You may have seen some papers carry that this paper is under an expression of concern. That means the reader or the researcher who is using this paper with a mark of expression of concern, he or she should uh, use judgment, not blindly accept the paper for what it is supposed to. It, they should keep that in mind that this paper has got an expression of concern. And either way, it may be cleared subsequently or it may be retracted. It's an interim expression of concern. And how to check publication misconduct? I say this is a micro environment where the author interests are there. Author, then there is a macro environment, which is unhealthy competition. We are all in the caught up in the web of institution pressurizing researchers, researchers trying to because their career depend on it, their uh, promotion depend on it. Sometimes they're getting a job depends on it. So this macro environment should be cleared of unhealthy competition. Support for retract. Secondly, many times a whistleblower is ridiculed. Sometimes there is litigation. There may be person who accuses of other researcher of misconduct. That person doesn't want to be ridiculed or sometimes they are harassed. So support for retraction should be an important part of publication policy. Researchers reporting scientific fraud should be rewarded instead of being ridiculed or harassed. So many researchers who know of scientific fraud, they do not come for. Publishers can have a corpus to pay the whistleblowers like bug bounty for ethical hackers. There are nowadays ethical hackers who have a, some sort of a corpus where they get rewarded for ethical hacking. Similarly, researchers who detect scientific fraud I mean, this is just a suggestion by some experts. Academic institutions can give incentives to those attempted to correct the literature. So these type of credits is not there. So there is no incentive. Nobody wants to become unpopular among his or her own peers. So there is silence. All retractions should not be set back. Those self-correcting honest errors should be appreciated. Okay, retraction can be imposed by the editor or by the journal or sometimes an honest researcher. Sometimes he or she subsequently detects some flaw in his or her own work. She or he can also ask for a retraction that yes, I want to self-correct or I want to retract the paper. And those type of authors are, should be appreciated and they usually are appreciated. They have done studies and found that those who do self-retraction they do not face any stigma compared to those on whom the retraction is imposed on. So these are some of the references I have given, uh, Publish of Paris, then uh, Matrix, Gaming the Matrix, Garfield, and uh, Orange Key Retraction Watch is a uh, newsletter blog which uh, identifies the retracted papers 
misconduct in publication, those who want to keep abreast should subscribe to Retraction Watch by Ivan Orensky. And it gives the update on uh, misconducts. It will give the list of retracted papers every week. And last is the code guidelines. That is again an important thing which comes up. And that's all. Thank you. From recording. Stop recording.